here are five watches that in my opinion are currently undervalued. Number one, Omega Aquaterra Quartz. There are quite a few different options to choose from. Of course, the prices will depend on the condition, on the age, on the size, on the movement, etc., etc., etc. In this video, as I said, I'm gonna focus on the Quartz version. I know a lot of you might be turned off when you hear a Quartz watch, but keep in mind, Omega Quartz movements are not the same as the Quartz movements you find in a dollar store watches. They're just completely different caliber of a watch. In my collection, I have a Quartz Omega, Omega Seamaster Golden Eye Edition, and I love that watch. It keeps great time, and I'm a strong believer that every collection should have at least one or two Quartz watches. The Aquaterra that I'm gonna highlight today is reference 2517.50. This is a discontinued model. It's a 39 millimeter case diameter watch, in my opinion. Probably the best case size for this specific type of watch. It is sort of an alternative to Rolex Explorer in 39 millimeters, thus making it pretty versatile. You can wear it as a sports watch. You could also dress it up a little bit. If you do a quick online search, you can find them on eBay. You can find them on Chrono24. The one I'm highlighting right now is found on eBay. Uh, this watch costs 1400 US dollars. It has 150 meters of water resistance, uh, fantastic finishes, uh, it comes on a stainless steel bracelet, as I said, a super versatile watch, and for $1,400, it's hard to go wrong with. Yes, it has the quartz movement, but quartz movements have their own advantages. Like for example, maintenance of the watch is super simple. Just replace the battery every couple of years, pay 30 bucks, and you're done. That's it. That's all the maintenance you have to do with this watch. So in my opinion, this is one of the most undervalued watches on the market right now. And since this model is discontinued, I wouldn't be surprised if the prices started climbing up. Number two, Glycine Combat Sub 42 Bronze GMT. I found this watch on ashford.com. Once again, no affiliation with this website, just being Mr. Nice Guy here. Uh, it costs $620 and you're getting one hell of a deal for that price point. Glycine watches are part of ETA Group and they offer specs that are really hard to beat even if you look at micro brand market. You get a caliber GL293 automatic GMT movement which is essentially an ETA2893-2 movement. To give you an idea, if you were to buy just this movement alone, it would cost you anywhere between $400 and $500. Here, for $620, you get a whole watch that comes with that movement. I really don't know how they make money. On top of that, the watch that you actually get is pretty good. Without a question, it's one of those undervalued watches on the market right now. So that's why it's on this list. The next watch, uh, it's kind of difficult to justify why it's on this list. Let me explain. So the watch I'm talking about is the Seiko Reference SZSJ007. Now to understand why this watch is on the list, I first have to tell you a little bit about this watch. So in 2021, I think, Seiko has partnered up with Japanese retailer called Nano Universe to create a unique line of chronographs. I think they created three chronographs in total. Two out of the three chronographs look quite a bit like Rolex Daytona. And as you know, anything that looks like Rolex Daytona skyrockets in price. Originally, these watches were offered at 270 US dollars for Japanese domestic market only. And of course, on the resale market, they tripled in price. If you can even find one, you're looking at spending anywhere between 900 to 1200 dollars to buy this watch. Of course, way too overpriced for the specs that you get. It's a simple Mecha Quartz movement. Uh, the bracelet is your standard cheap-ish Seiko bracelet, and the case is really nothing special. It even comes with a Hardlex crystal, not a sapphire crystal, so definitely overpriced. However, there is this other reference, as that as J007, the one I'm including in this list. Well, this watch is more of a Tudor Black Bay chrono homage. In my opinion, it's still a very attractive watch to look at, and it actually sells online for the suggested retail price of $270. I've even seen them go for a bit lower, around $240, $250 on eBay. So that's why this watch is on this list. It's not because it offers like amazing value for money in terms of specs, but it offers amazing value for money. It's undervalued if you compare it to two other references in the same line that are offered with this watch that sell for three, four times higher than this watch. I think it deserves a place on this list. 
Plus, I thought it was just an interesting story and interesting watch, so I wanted to share it with you guys. Next up is another watch that comparing to other watches that it competes with within its own brand makes it a good deal, but out in the open, maybe not such a good deal. I'm talking about Rolex Submariner, specifically reference 16613. This is one of those unicorns, the undervalued Rolex sports model. Don't get me wrong, it's still an expensive watch and yes, it's a Rolex, all the Rolex hate, whatever. But let me tell you why I think it deserves a place on this list. The vast majority of Rolex sports models sell on a gray market for way more than what you can find a brand new model at the AD. Well, not the case with this watch. The brand new two-tone Rolex Submariner from the AD actually costs more than what this uh, gray market or used version of the watch costs the five digit sub now of course that makes sense because the older watch uh, doesn't have as good of specs like it doesn't have the ceramic bezel uh, the bracelet is by far worse it doesn't have the new upgraded movement so yeah it makes sense that the watch costs less but of course watch collecting especially rolex is not about logic it's not about making sense so it's just one of those rare cases where the watch that's used costs less than a brand new one from the AD. From that standpoint alone, it's already sort of undervalued. But what's more interesting, that this two-tone yellow gold and stainless steel watch costs pretty much the same amount as a regular five-digit sub, 16610. So here you're getting all the same specs, you're getting the same Rolex quality, you're getting everything the same, plus the added value of gold and usually two-tone watches sell for a higher amount than just purely stainless steel watches, yet they both cost about the same, the stainless steel version or the oyster steel version and the two-tone version. So because of these two factors, I think this watch deserves a place on this list. And in fact, I think this watch is gonna go up in price at some point in the near future because more and more people are getting into the two-tone uh, watches and more and more people are discovering this in my opinion, a bit undervalued model. The last watch I wanna include on this list could be the most divisive because of the brand and its looks. It's Rado D-Star Automatic. Now you might be wondering why the hell is Rado on this list? Fair question, let me explain. You can find some brand new, never worn gray market examples of this watch on Ashford once again and on eBay around $800. For $800, even though it's a Rado, you're still getting one hell of a deal. The specs speak for themselves. It's part of the Swatch group. It has a great case diameter for this type of a watch, kind of a sporty, dressy watch, 38 millimeters, so it will wear smaller. You probably need a smaller to medium sized wrist. It's also quite a thin watch, only 11 millimeters thick, still has 100 meters of water resistance, so it is somewhat sporty. If I'm not mistaken, I think this watch has your standard ETA 2824 with the extended power reserve, the power matic, or whatever they call it. So all of that sounds great, but it also has one more trick up its sleeve. The case and the bracelet are both made out of ceramic. Here you're getting a fully ceramic watch for under a grand. In fact, you're getting it for around $800. That is sort of unheard of because ceramic cases are notoriously difficult to produce. And in the past, if you wanted a ceramic case, you probably had to spend at least three, four grand on a watch if you're buying brand new. Here you're getting a ceramic case and bracelet with titanium clasp for around $800. That's crazy deal. That's crazy undervalued. But there is a catch. It's a Rado and the design is a bit divisive. Personally, to me, it doesn't really appeal. I wish it did because I would add this watch to my collection in a heartbeat but it doesn't really appeal to me. So unfortunately I won't be adding one to my collection, but if this type of design appeals to you, I think it's one of the most undervalued watches on the market right now. Speaking of adding watches to my collection, one out of the five watches that I mentioned, uh, I guess one out of the four, cause you know, I'm not adding Rado to my collection. I did recently purchase. I put my money where my mouth is. Can you guess which watch that is? Leave your comment in the comment section below. Let me know what your guess is. I'm really curious to see how well you know me, guys. Also leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what are some of the other 
undervalued watches on the market right now. I'd love to do a part two of this video at some point in the future. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We release new videos every week. There are some links in the description below. Check those out if you're curious. Thanks for watching this one. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had fun and I'll see you guys in the future. What is it? Can you get the stick out? You already have a stick. You already have a stick. Need another one?